Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. Last time round we worked on the UK British style park and I was really happy with how this actually came out. It was something that I was really looking forward to building because it's something different. I've not done a park for quite some time and it also allowed me to work on some other aspects like we talked about in the previous episode with regards to the shrubbery areas, the sort of overgrown tree segments of the build and just adding in some interesting aspects about the area um, it's kind of one of those things that I think gets missed out when you're detailing small towns and villages it's the fact that it isn't just houses that are down here you get these parks you get you know car parking spaces little allotment areas lots of really cool aspects that I think we can really have a lot of fun with building today and that's going to be the basis of today's video. We're going to do a lot of detailing and sort of filling in the, the gaps and the nooks and crannies, so to speak, of the town itself. Surround it by some luscious, beautiful fields and really create that look because at the moment it looks a little bit like a, it's sticking out like a sore thumb. We want to make it blend in. We want to make it look a lot more realistic. So let's jump into it. Let's get into the town expansion. If you cast your memory back to the previous episode, I did talk about the fact that I did place down a lot of houses pre-determined that episode and the reason I did that was to pretty much just map out the landscape and the areas and work out what type of houses and buildings we're going to have in certain locations. The plan for this build was really to show an emphasis on this area was once a village, it then got expanded into a smallish town and then it got taken over more by more housing estates being added on as time progressed. And that's what I wanted to get across with the placement of these buildings on certain roads and we'll talk about that as we go along. But it's something that I think adds to the realism as well. When you're looking at certain builds, even if you're just walking down your local street, you can certainly tell the areas that were there prior to anything else before that you'll see these new housing estates and developments kicking off and you'll know just by the nature of the buildings where on what sort of era they were sort of built versus the ones that are predetermined there and it's a good thing for me personally because on the workshop we have the likes of Mac Welshman, Brick 4000 and Sparks who have done different era based buildings which worked perfectly for this particular build and this particular episode so that's um, a real bonus for us we can really show the change in style of buildings throughout this particular build and i also wanted to add a bit more detail in terms of how we did in the last episode we did a lot of these small um, sort of back end garages and parking spaces and i wanted to recreate these again and add a few more around because they they came out really well and it is something that's very realistic in in this type of area that we're building on you may also remember as well last time round we was talking about these driveways and having them as a functional sort of parking lot in that sense an issue i had before was every time i placed down an extra road to create these driveways or these sort of back pass avenues the the roads that i had automatically put down the speed um, sign props and there was no way of removing it however you'll note now that that is not a thing and um, we did have a message um, on the comments last week from I think it's pronounced Wafi or Wafi um, but either way um, he was asking uh, whether we've solved the problems with the driveways um, and we have and the reason we have done so is thanks to Mac Welshman he um, saw the video last time round and he basically put together a quick testing driveway and it does exactly what I wanted to it allows cars to park on just one side of the road and it also removes the road sign so that is brilliant and that's something that will be coming to the workshop at some sort at some time um, I will put a link in the description below so if you're watching this video later on you'll be able to find it on the workshop probably now but they do work really well and it's something I want to use a lot of throughout this not just these little back avenue parking spaces as you can see here but also i want to add them in and have some driveways for the actual people's houses as well and because they do have an automatic car parking space on just one side of these driveways as you can see here quite clearly on the video it's perfect for having a driveway with a car on as well so really really does work well and i'm so so pleased and huge thanks to mac welshman for working with me on getting something to work for this particular build so yeah keep an eye out for those because they are really going to change the way you build 
Another thing as well is I really enjoy putting down these decals. Some of these road decals and textures we've got to our disposal from the creators is ridiculous. Like, just look how detailed this looks. I know some of the areas probably wouldn't look as down and glim as these particular car parks, but these work really well for this area because it is an older estate and the, the detail levels you can get now with these decals is just ridiculous. I mean, I'm thinking back, and in fact, I actually looked at a few of my um, very old screenshots of the British challenge I did many, many, many times, well, what, probably like three, four years back now, and we didn't have anything like this. There was no real themes at that point. It was just a vanilla game, and you compare the two together now, and it's, it's just astonishing how far this game has come, and the introduction of these decals really has changed the game visually, and also just the way you mentally think about the game. It is really a big enhancement on, on the way we achieve our goals in this particular game title. And it's it is really, really amazing. I look forward to seeing what other amazing textures come out because it's not just the textures themselves. It's when you start playing around with them and you create your own type of textures in a sense where you're combining different textures on top of another. You're lowering them down with page up and page down to just minimize the effect that comes through it's all in all it is just really fun i find i don't know about you guys let me know in the comment section below if you're the same do you enjoy messing around with these decals or do you just place them and leave them as they are let me know be good to hear your thoughts now i did have a bit of a battle going on with the terrain um and placing so many houses down on top of each other because the driveways on here are brilliant because they have the cars that automatically spawn on there and park up when people move into the house which is amazing apart from when tractors appear like that one but um we will at some point go through the advanced vehicle options and um certainly remove the vehicles that we don't want to see because i can't really imagine a tractor parking up in a, a sort of a state like this can you <laughs> um, but regardless of that um the difficulty i had as you can see here with the terrain because the driveways are obviously a solid piece of asphalt, so to speak, we couldn't really show it off in its glory or all its glory, so to speak. So I had to lower it down enough to hide it underneath. And then we basically used these one by one concrete um, fillers to create our own path, our own sort of driveways, which isn't as realistic, doesn't look as good um, ideally it would be nice to have changed up a little bit but it works for me it works it's um, it definitely still gives the same effect off that I wanted and we could have obviously spent a lot more time and detailed each driveway with some decals but again I don't want to be going too heavy in detailing these sort of builds because it's gonna take up a lot of time and a lot of resources on my behalf as well so we are we are detailing this area and you can obviously see that they are we are detailing it to a certain degree but we're not going to go too crazy on it it's more the small builds that i'm going to go very heavy details or just small segments within a bigger build like this um just like last week where we did build up some of the housing estates but we concentrated heavily on that beautiful park so that's the kind of plan we're going for here i also took advantage of prop it up as well i'm not sure if i left any of the footage in the game because we all know the risks sometimes with prop it up. Sometimes your game crashes. I've never actually had an issue with it, but I have heard stories that people have had issues where they've removed something from a building and the whole game has crashed. Um, but what I did is I removed some of the vanilla trees and replaced them with um, the updated beautiful trees because some of them were, eh, they were the vanilla default trees and they just didn't look very nice in my opinion. Um, obviously they're the only trees that were available when these buildings were built so you know that's why prop it up is a great tool and if you haven't used it definitely have a look into it just just be aware that sometimes it can crash your game so always save before you do anything on that behalf that's the, um, the pub gaming top tip for today um, and you'll also see now we're trying to fill in some of these gaps so that was what I was getting at the start of this video we don't want to just always have open fields we don't always want to have grown over sort of overgrown areas with you know car parking spaces and concrete slabs filling these gaps sometimes it is just a big area of trees or maybe just a open field with a pathway across it so i wanted to try and create a different type of feel to fill these gaps in 
because we don't want to do the same thing over and over again because it gets repetitive and you know from top view it just doesn't look as realistic. I also decided to use a lot of the pre-configured buildings is how I'm going to call it but then what I mean by that is the buildings that always have the guard already have the gardens added with some detail in there because it saves time and one thing I have looked at doing and I know Prez has done this to great success is using the asset editor to use some of these buildings without the props in and just create my own um, buildings themselves with the garden features and different bits here and there so that might be something we look into um, I'm not gonna do it hastily because it's a very time-consuming job to do and I'm still trying to work on my one video a week <laughs> um, throw out so we'll see how that goes um, I think for now these houses still do a good job these ones in particular would have been nicer to have a different decal in the back and I did speak to Mac Welshman about that as well the other day um, but all in all, you know, they still work and um, the placement of these still gives off a nice feel. And uh, yeah, I think that's kind of the best that we can get out of this for the time being. We could obviously have used some of the non-detailed ones, which both um, Rick and uh, Mac have produced for us and Sparks actually recently with those beautiful village buildings. But it's, yeah, I mean, I probably will do some like that um, because realistically, the gardens are a little bit bigger than what these are um, and they're not as you know the shapes aren't always the same sometimes people take advantage if they live on the corner of the road they'll have a slightly bigger garden because the fence will go out past that area all little things like that which are things we can take into consideration um, and this is another area here that I wanted to work on um, I wanted to make this just a run down um, sort of uncared for area by adding all this grass down and again just adding a different feel for the area rather than having this to be another park or another car parking area we just wanted to add a few little different ideas and different ways that we can pack out these uh these build areas which is again key to realism key to you know even just sometimes your motivation if you're building the same thing over and over again it does get a little bit boring in that sense. So I wanted to try and find a few other ways of doing so. Spent a lot of time on Google Maps, which obviously we all do if we are detailing. And another thing that I do suggest people who are struggling to put together a, you know, a starting point for building anything, whether it's UK, European or American or anything like that, just jump onto Google Maps and almost just copy the road layout and just go from there and see how how things um, progress. That's probably a great way that I would suggest that you do that. So let's take a little break there and let's have a look at some of the comments you guys posted last week on episode 20's video. First up, we have Jim.com. He said those grasses make all the difference to the detail level. The bit behind the garages might be my favorite part of the cinematics. You need a fence around the children's play area to stop them running off. And I do agree there, Jim. I do want to go back and add a fence around the park to conceal it a little bit more. And I really appreciate the comments about the sort of overgrown areas because I had so much fun working with those trees and foliage um, together to try and create a unique look. And I think that did I think I pulled it off pretty well, to be honest. Matty JJ21 said, in my local town in the UK, there's literally an area in the center of one of these housing estates dedicated to people's garages. And exactly, that's the reason why I did this. It is quite a common thing in the UK, not obviously everywhere, not all housing estates are like this, but it just adds to the realism. And um, I'm glad that it looks similar to one you've seen as well, Matty, thanks for that. Up next, we had a nice comment from Ree or Rhea. And they said, I was wondering if you could fill some of the space of allotments. We have quite a few in the area of allotments on the island. We also have a fair few viewpoints, woodland, country and coastline with walks with picnic areas. Now, this is something I am really looking forward to doing. And yes, I will be definitely doing some of these viewpoints because I've gone to quite a lot of them on the island. And there are some amazing ones and what amazing cinematics they will be. So thank you very much for your comments there. Everyone, I really appreciate every single comment that you send. I read every single one, I reply to every single one. Please do let me know your thoughts and feelings on the series and what you want to see next because it's great to hear from you guys, it really, really is.
So you can see what I mean now. There was a lot of um, movement about of these buildings, which did take a bit of time to get down and into location. Um, whether there's a quicker way of doing this, probably not because of the way you have to place down a building to start with. And sometimes when you do copy and paste and move it, it's quite hard to work out exactly whereabouts you need to place it to get it to line up. Obviously the difficulty I had was I had to line up these fences perfectly, otherwise it would look silly. <laughs> so that was a, a time consuming aspect of this build, but it's been worth it and you know I'm pleased with the outcome so far. It's working really well. Again, working on another one of these beautiful um, car parking lots um, which again detailed with a lot of nice decals works again exactly how I want it if there's any other things that you guys think would be nice to have inside these particular areas of housing estates other than garages and car park spaces and fields grassland etc what else is there I know we could probably put a few allotments in perhaps on the outskirts towards the the farmland but is there, is there anything else um, alongside those and parks that we could also look at adding into these housing estates because it's those realistic builds like that that really do change how things look. So now we are basically, we've pretty much finished the layout of this um, build. Now the houses are down, I've detailed as much as I wanted to do. Um, again, we could have obviously gone a lot more heavier, but it's it's not gonna be a thing on this series to go too heavily detailed on every single aspect of the build. So the plan now was I wanted to try and merge this into the landscape and not make it look like it was sticking out and kind of just plopped down um, in the middle of nowhere. So the plan was to basically work out a layout in terms of the road system and the farmland. So. I wanted to change this road here because it does actually do this in the actual location on the Isle of Wight that we're working on, which is God's Hill, if you haven't remembered from the last episode. Um, and I wanted to try and use the roads and also some of the hedges and bushes to break up the area. Now, one thing that I have noticed around the island is the farmlands are actually quite large in terms of, um, you know, different types of farmland. So I wanted to try and recreate that here by having some large areas of the same type of farm, um, type of, well, the actual type of farm itself, because I think previously I've been doing them a little bit too small, um, but perhaps on the outskirts of the island, they are smaller because the land values are less. Um, but I've certainly noticed that in the mainland itself of the island, the, the actual farm types are on a much larger scale so we're going to try and do that here it's obviously going to make life easier um, in general to build them on a larger scale because we've got you know more space to fill quickly which means we can build these up quicker and um, let me know if you think it looks more realistic this way or a lot of smaller different farms because there seems to be both on the island and I'm sure I will end up using both variants throughout the build itself but um, yeah, let me know what you thought and um, we can obviously go forward from there because there is a lot of farmland as we discussed <laughs> quite a lot in this series that we need to cover. Um, and I kind of use a combination again to separate. I use fences, I use the hedges as you can see here, trying to make it look a little bit more realistic rather than just a line of bushes. And there's a number of ways that I found that worked. For example here I added in some of the larger bushes across to make it look a little less repetitive. We also then go back a bit later on and add in some trees as well which again I think makes a big difference to the build. It just makes it look a little bit more realistic um, but I really do like the idea of using these particular hedges um, from the workshop because it just feels realistic. The combination of those and the gates and fences for the animals, I think are the two best combinations that we have to work with at the moment in the, um, the build itself. Now there were stages when I was working on this part that I kind of went a little bit into um, autopilot and I kind of forgot about the realism of these farms. So I did, as you saw moments ago, I did sort of create some holes in the bushes to make it more realistic that obviously farmers would be driving in and out from field to field to um, do what they need to do on the farmland so I was trying to do that itself and also that led me then to think okay we need to have a, a little farm house 
somewhere nearby um, and I just worked on this very small very simple um, but still quite detailed farmhouse and um, it's something that I want to do a lot of and um, I'm actually thinking of maybe asking you guys to create a very small um, plot of land based farmhouse that we can then plop in so I might do that if you're interested jump into the discord I'm gonna open it up to people that perhaps what we'll do is we'll have a, a two by two square that you can then detail and work on using the UK assets that I have listed on the bottom of this video and what we'll do is we'll then export it into the game uh, well you export it and I'll import it into my game and we can then use that to place around across the island so if you are interested in creating a very small little farmhouse detailed build let me know and I'll sort of introduce this as not so much a competition but a fact of getting your build onto the island very simply so yeah let me know your thoughts on that guys I'll all, I will promote this a bit more heavily in terms of how we can do this once I've worked it out but I think that'd be a cool thing to do um, and it'll be nice to have a lot of your work on the island as well I'd really enjoy that so yeah keep an eye out for that but that does bring us pretty close to the end of this episode um, really happy with how this has come out now that we've got the farms in place and the buildings and houses are all detailed this now looks like a completed build now I have teased you a lot recently about a exciting project coming up and that is going to be coming up next week so um, make sure you don't miss that because it's something that I'm really excited to show you um, I've done a bit of testing and I think it will work so yes keep an eye out for that other than that guys please do hit that like button because it gets us seen and we are getting very close to the 10k hit on the subscribe account as well so I do need some ideas on what to do for that 10k special if you want to support the channel further you can do so on Patreon but other than that guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend and enjoy the week ahead and we'll catch up next time thanks for watching and all the best